Hi, and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We're looking at welfare economics. In particular, we're looking at the amount that sellers gain from trade, which we've called producer surplus. We've been looking at the example of Angie, who starts off with four apples, and we've seen that the key to understanding Angie's gain from trade is to look at her marginal opportunity cost curve, which we've drawn here. And we've seen that Angie's producer surplus from any trade is the area under the price, above her marginal cost curve, up to the quantity of apples that she sells. In the last presentation, we saw that Angie's marginal cost curve was actually the same as her supply curve. So we've got Angie's supply curve, and we know that Angie's producer surplus is the area under the price above her supply curve up to the quantity that she sells. Why do we know this? Well, we know that Angie's producer surplus is the area under the price above her marginal cost curve up to the quantity that she sells. And we know that Angie's marginal cost curve is the same as her supply curve. So it immediately follows that Angie's producer surplus is the area under the price above her supply curve up to the quantity she sells. So let's say that Angie sells two apples at a dollar per apple and that we have Angie's supply curve or her marginal cost curve. Then Angie's producer surplus will be the area under the price of a dollar up to the quantity of apples she sells, two apples, above her supply curve. So Angie's producer surplus is just the pink shaded area here, and that pink shaded area is just equal to 70 cents. A dollar minus 50 on the first unit, 50 cents, plus a dollar minus 80 on the second unit, which is 20 cents, 50 plus 20, 70 cents producer surplus for Angie. But what would happen if the government had a rule in place that said Angie was only allowed to sell one apple? So what would Angie's producer surplus be if Angie only sells one apple at a price of a dollar per apple? Notice that in that case, Angie is not selling on her supply curve. Her supply curve tells us that she would like to sell two apples if the price is a dollar per apple. But there's a government rule that says she can only sell one apple. What's her producer surplus? Well, it's still the area under the price of a dollar above the supply curve, up to the one apple that she's allowed to sell. So Angie's producer surplus is given by this purple shaded area here, which is simply a dollar, the price she receives, minus 50 cents, her opportunity cost, on that one apple. Her producer surplus is 50 cents. Notice that even though Angie would like to sell two apples, if she's only able to sell one apple, she only makes producer surplus on the one apple she actually sells. You can only make producer surplus on something that you actually trade, that you actually sell. The fact that she would like to sell a second apple, but she isn't allowed to, is irrelevant. Her producer surplus is the area under the price, above the supply curve, up to the quantity she actually sells, not the quantity she would like to sell. So let's summarise. Producer surplus is the seller's share of gains from trade. It is the difference between what the sellers receive and the total opportunity cost of what they actually sell. And it is given by the area under the price sellers receive, above the supply curve, up to the quantity sold. And finally, note that producer surplus is closely related to a seller's profit. We'll look at that later in the course. But that is all for now. Talk to you next time.